Hello, I'm Henning from uh, Make It. I'm the co-founder and uh, product chief. And today we'll be making a universal remote control for Microbit. The remote control can be used to control any kind of ground vehicle, like uh, the hover bit, the wheel bit, the snow bit, and the drone with uh, some added extra features. So what is a remote control? So normally you might think of a remote control as something that looks like a hand controller uh, that we see on the left here. It could typically look something like this. You have uh, two rockers, uh, one for the speed and uh, one for steering and you might have some other buttons as well. But we are going to be using the microbit only and as you might know the microbit has only two buttons that we can use. Uh, we also have a reset button but you can't use that for controlling and on microbit 2 there is even a touch button here uh, but uh, we're going to be making a universal remote control that works on microbit 1 and microbit 2 so we will be concentrating on using uh, just the two buttons A and B and the microbit has uh, some other sensors as well that can help us to uh, do what we want uh, without those uh, rocker switches that is uh, normally associated with the remote control so for any vehicle that goes on the ground, there are three things that we need to control. So that is the start and stop. Uh, it's the steering and it's the throttle and uh, that's also called speed. To control a vehicle, we will be collecting three values and sending them over the radio and it will be received on the other side and making the vehicle go where we want. The first value that we need to make is called ARM and this is a drone language and it means uh, simply to start and stop the engine and the ARM can only be a binary number which is 0 and 1. Then we have the throttle, uh, that's how fast we want the vehicle to go and this number can be any number between 0 and 100 so that's a percentage number. And then we have the steering and this is degrees and uh, we will be using uh, minus 45 degrees to plus 45 degrees and I will be showing you later what this means. So we will be using uh, the buttons and the buttons can be used for changing the throttle and we can make the throttle uh, increase or decrease when we press the buttons. And then we have the steering and now we don't have any more buttons but we do have accelerometer who can measure the angle of the micro bit. So what we can do is make a, a function that is uh, reading the angle uh, that the microbit has and uh, transmitting this angle to the receiver. And then uh, we also have the arm, which is the start and stop. And we can do this by pressing both buttons at the same time, because this is kind of be like a third button. So let's get started with the coding. So we will go to makeco.microbit.org and uh, here you need to create a new project and because this is a transmitter you can call your product uh, sender or transmitter and then uh, you can choose uh, your channel so this time I will be using channel 7 but bear in mind that if you are in a class and you have multiple uh, micro bits uh, you want to choose different channels so you want to have your channel on your transmitter and on your receiver and you don't want this number to be anyone else's and you can choose any number between 0 and 255 I'll just pick number 7 so now we have the simulator on the left and we have the blocks on the right and then we have the download button down here. Okay, so let's get back to the values. Uh, we have three values and the short for this is called ART. Arm, roll and throttle. So that's a nice rule of thumb. It's the ART rule. So we go to variables. Make a variable arm then make a variable again roll and then a 
another variable throttle so let's start with the throttle so when I press button B I would like my throttle to become higher and when I press button A I would like my throttle to become lower to use uh, any buttons or input sensors uh, we go to input and here we have button A just zoom in a little so this is what's going to happen when we press button A and we also want to use button B so we can right click and duplicate and now this is grayed out because we can't have a uh, button A two times and we need to change it to button B and when I press button B I want the throttle to increase uh, but I don't want it to increase too slow and not too fast to, uh, to increase a, va a variable uh, you use the change feature on the variable uh, section so we take the change here and put it inside the button B block now if I want to run on 50% speed and I only change it by one each time how many times I need to press that is quite a lot of times so if I were to change with only one each time I would have to press a lot of times so we want to increase it by a little bit more than that but we don't want to increase too fast because then it might go too quickly for us so a good number would probably be something like 5 or 10 I'm gonna go for 5 and then we will also like to decrease in a similar manner and I can now copy this or right click and uh, click copy duplicate and here to make it become less what can we do here we simply insert a minus sign so it will become five less than it was and now we can test if this is working by using uh, the show number feature so if you go to basic and show number we can insert this in the forever part so now it will repeat itself continuously and we go to variables throttle and we insert that into the show number and now we can actually test this in the simulator and I can now go to the full screen and now we can see what happens if I press button B so I hit button B and we see now the throttle is 5 here again and now it's 10 and so on and you might need to wait a little bit for the text to scroll and I press button A it should go down again so now we have been decreasing throttle with uh, button A and increasing the throttle with button B but uh, it's also very nice to have a arm function and this is where we start and stop all the engines just like uh, on and off button basically like a start and stop button in a car it turns everything on the next time we press it it turns everything off and then it switches back and forth and uh, the problem is that we don't have any more buttons but what we can do is use the a plus b button so we go and grab another button a block and then we need to change it to A plus B. So how do we make a function that is alternating between on and off? Then we can use the if uh, block. So we go to logic and pick up a if block. And then we need a comparison block and this is uh, something we insert into the if block then we go to variables pick up the arm block and now we want to see if arm is zero because if it's zero then we want it to become one so 
So if it's zero, set arm to one. Now it will switch from zero to one. But how do we make it go back again? First time I tried to make this function, uh, this is what I did. I made two if blocks, one that changed from zero to one and one that changed from one to zero. And we can actually test this method by using the show number arm to show the actual number on the screen in the simulator. Now we press A plus B to see what happens. And it stays on zero. So this method didn't work. Here's the problem. The first if block checks if it's zero. And uh, as we know, the arm is already zero. So it's setting it to one. Then it's jumping uh, straight to the next if block and it checks if it's one and yes it's now one and it sets us back to zero and it this happens so quickly that uh, the number on the screen doesn't even have time to update itself and we have to do it a bit differently it has to either set it to one or to zero but not both so uh, to do this we will remove the last if block and change uh, the first one. So by pressing the plus sign we will get something called else and uh, as in the name it's now doing either the first one or the second one. So if arm is zero it will send arm to one but else uh, that means like if it's not zero just quickly delete the old if block. If it's not zero, that means if it's one, then it goes to the part that is under the else section and sets it back to zero. So now it doesn't do both. It only does one of those things. Now we can test uh, the function by pressing the A plus B button in the simulator. And now what we should see is a number that alternates between 0 and 1. So now we have the arm function which is 0 and 1. We have the throttle where we can change the number between 0 and 100. And now we also need the roll which is the steering which is also very important for any vehicle. The micro bit will be using the accelerometer which you can find on the back side of the micro bit. So look closely down to the left, you see where the accelerometer is placed. It's actually using the gravity to measure uh, in different directions, microscopical springs uh, that are being pulled by gravity. And so they measure actually acceleration, but also the gravity from the earth. So when we rotate the micro bit to the sides, uh, we will be able to read the roll angle. Then we go to variables and pick up uh, a new set variable and we can delete the show number arm by dragging it over like this. Now we need to go to input and more to find the rotation input. We insert it and we change it to roll because it's not a uh, pitch. Uh, pitch is forward and backwards roll is to the right and to the left so we change it to roll and now we need to change uh, what kind of variable we are changing and the variable we will be changing is also the roll variable now we can use uh, the terminal function to really show how the roll angle works we connect the micro bit uh, to the computer with the USB. We go to serial and pick up the serial write value x equals zero, number three from the top. And we insert uh, the roll value so we can actually see the value in real time in the data logger. So variables, pick up the roll variable and insert it into the blank zero. Now we need to download the code. Make sure the orange light on the back side of the micro bit is blinking. And make sure the micro bit is paired. 
Now you should be able to see two of these buttons. You should be able to see the show data simulator and the show data device. And we need to have the device one. And if you don't have that, you might need to reconnect your micro bit. And remember, it must be paired. Now we will see in real time the angles that is being measured by the accelerometer. Now if I uh, roll the micro bit to the right, we see now that the numbers are becoming higher and higher. And this is actually the degrees. So if I move it over like this, you can see now it's around 90 degrees. If I roll it back to where it's flat, uh, the angle should be around zero. And when I rotate it to the left, uh, the number should be negative because now it's on the other side and now it will be negative and uh, equally the same number just with a minus in the beginning until we are all down to minus 90 and we can even move it longer if you want and we can also see this on the graph on top uh, so this uh, this graph is now showing us uh, over time what's happening to the roll angle. Because this is an accelerometer that is not only measuring the gravity, it's also measuring real acceleration. If I shake it, you will see that you get a lot of numbers. This is called noise and this can happen if you have motors and machines that are very close to the micro bit. Uh, we can sometimes get noise on the measurements and that's what can happen on a drone but for remote control mechanical noise isn't a big problem so let's say I want to uh, steer the hovercraft to the left I will turn it something like this and now it's around minus 40 minus 50 and if I want to steer it to the right I pull it over to the other side and now it's around minus 45 to the 45 range so now I can actually throw away this, don't need it anymore. So now we have roll, throttle and arm. Uh, but we do have the screen on the micro bit. And it would be nice if we could show these three values on the screen. But before we do that, let's add the radio channel. So let's make another variable. And this could be called radio channel or radio group. So I will call it radio group and this will contain your chosen radio channel and this will be set only on the start of the code so we, we will be putting in the on start block and this will be run only once every time the micro bit starts or every time we push the reset button so the reset button is here and it's a good practice to learn to press the reset button without having to turn around the micro bit so the best thing is if we can see the screen while we press the reset button. So we'll be setting the radio group to a chosen channel. So I just picked channel 7. And uh, this is a variable and nothing is going to happen before we use this variable for something. And the first thing I want to do is just to show my radio channel on the screen. Uh, this way I will always be uh, reminded of which radio channel I selected. And even if we have a classroom with more than one radio transmitter, uh, if they get uh, mixed up, uh, it's very easy to just press the reset button on the back and then see what number that comes up. So we want to show the radio channel. So we go to basic, show number, and we go to variables and pick up the radio group from down here and insert it. Now every time we start it will show us the radio group on the screen. And now we want this radio chip to actually be using this radio channel. To do that we go to radio set group And here we wanted to set the exact same group as we set on the beginning. So we go to variables, radio group, and insert it here. 
and now we can be certain that the number that is shown on the screen is the same number that will be used in the system as our radio channel. Now let's see if we can use the display on the micro bits to show the arm, roll and throttle. We can start with uh, something simple and that is showing the arm. So the arm, as you might remember, is just a number that can be 1 or 0. And we can do that by using just one of these 25 LEDs to switch it on or off. And it's going to be showing us if the arm is on or off. So to turn on an LED on the screen, we go to LED, plot, and we insert this in the forever loop under the set roll. So now it will be updating the screen just as quickly as it updates the roll value. And now we can choose between all those 25 LEDs on the screen. Uh, if we hold the mouse arrow over the one of the LEDs, we can see a coordinate. The top left LED has the values 0, 0.0. So this is the x-axis, so this is 0, 0.0, and we have 1.0, and 2.0, and 3.0, and 4.0. And this is the y-axis, so if we go down, we have, will have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. And the middle pixel is 2.2. .2. And the down mode pixel is 4.4. But now we can just use the 0, 0.0 in the top left corner. Or if you want, you can use another space for this LED. So what we want is if the arm is 1, we want the LED to be on. And if the arm is off, we want the LED to be off. So we can go to logic and the if block. Now we will check if the arm is 1. And now we can either use the if arm is equal to 1 or we can use something even simpler. And that is just doing this. This means if the arm is bigger than 0. So if arm is 1, it will do uh, what's inside the block. So we can now insert the plot here. And then we have to also clear the screen. Uh, if we uh, if we don't clear the screen the old number 7 is still going to be visible. So we go to basic, clear screen, insert it just before we do the LED blocks. And now we can test it in the simulator. So now we can see that the LED is being switched on and off. So now we know that our arm value is 0. Now we know it's 1. Then let's see if we can display the roll and the throttle values. So for example we can have an LED that is moving sideways according to our roll value and we can have a uh, LED that is moving upwards the more throttle we have. So let's try and see if we can do that. We go to LED plot again and um, we insert it under the, the first plot. So this is the X axis which changes uh, what position our LED has in this direction. And this is the Y axis and it uh, determines how high up and down the LED is. So if we want an LED to move in the middle, uh, the y-axis, as you might remember, uh, the y-axis should be 2. So if we, so let's just try to plot 2.2. Now uh, the dot is in the middle, and now we want it to move sideways. To make it move sideways, uh, we can change just the x value in the pixel plot. So if you change this to uh, 0, now the plotting will be on the left. And if we insert 4, 
Now the plotting will be on the right. And now let's see if we can make it move back and forth according to the roll value. To do this we have a function that can take a, a set of number and kind of squeeze them down. So let's look at the roll value again. The roll value could be a number between minus 45 and plus 45. So we have minus 45 And in the middle we have 0, and then we have plus 45. But our screen will only take a number between 0 and 4. Because the coordinate here can only be a number between 0 and 4. We kind of want to make these numbers become squeezed and moved until we have something that is between 0 and 4. And to do this we can use the map function. So let's go to math and map. And we will be placing this in the x part of the plot. Now the map is asking for a set of numbers and then it will ask the lowest number, the highest number, and the output. So, what do we want it to map? We want it to map the roll value. Because that is the rotation. So we pick up the roll block down here. And now, what is the lowest number it can be? And that is minus 45. So we type minus 45, then what is the highest number it can be? That is 45. And then on the output, it's what's the lowest number we wanted to output. And if we remember here on the screen, the lowest number is 0. And that's already here, so that's uh, correct. And the highest number it can be is 4. And as you remember in the coordinate system, uh, the highest number it will take is 4. So that's, that's a good thing. Now we can actually test it in the simulator by moving the uh, mouse arrow over the micro bit and uh, simulating that the micro bit is rotating sideways. And now you can see that the LEDs or the pixel is moving sideways the same way as we move. If we want it to be on another place, we can actually change the Y coordinate. So if we, for example, change it to 4, it's now we're going to be down here. Because we only, now we only change the Y value, so we don't change the height of it. It's still going to move sideways in the same way. So it looks like it's working good, and I'll just put it back to position 2. And the last thing we want to show is the throttle. And for me it's more logical to have a uh, throttle as a pixel that is moving up and down. Uh, the more throttle we have, the higher the pixel is moving. And we can do that uh, in a kind of similar fashion. So let's go back and see what values we have again on the throttle. So. The throttle can be a number between 0 and 100. And we want it to move up and down. So we can now take another plot. And now we don't want to change the x value, but we want to change the y value because that's what makes it go up and down. So now we can use the map function again. You go to math and map. And we insert it in the Y position. And what do we want it to map? Now that's the throttle. Go to variables, throttle. And what's the lowest number the throttle can be? That's zero. What's the highest value the throttle can be? That's 100. Or 100%. And it's outputting 
0 and 4 and let's see what happens um, so now we have a LED in the top left position and that's not the arm LED that we made before uh, this is actually the throttle and the reason for that is that 0, 0.0 in the display is on the top left so what we need to do is to switch it so it starts at the bottom so how do we do that? Well, as you might have guessed, we can now either switch those two values or we can switch those two values. So if we enter 4 here and 0 here, it means that 0, which is a low throttle, will result in a high number. And a high number is down here. So the, if the throttle is 0, the dot will be at the bottom. And now we can try to increase the throttle in the simulator. And as you can see now it's going upwards when we increase the throttle with button B. And when we press button A, it's going down again. So now we have roll, throttle, and let's see if the arm is still working. Yes, and there is the arm. And if you want, you can even move the arm to another place. Uh, if you don't want the arm to collide with a very high throttle, you can make the throttle move by changing these coordinates. For example, in the top right corner. Now the arm is here. Or wherever you want it to be. But I'm just going to use 0, 0.0 because of old habit or wherever. Okay, so now we have collected uh, the three values and we are showing it on the screen. Now we can actually download the code and see how it works. The first thing we see is the uh, radio channel. So now I can actually press the reset and we can see that my radio channel was uh, being showed on the display. And now we can move it sideways and see and make sure that the pixel is moving correctly. Then we can try the throttle. I increase it, press multiple times and it's going upwards. And I press button A, it's going down. Then let's try the arm. I press both buttons at the same time. The light switches on. I press again, it switches off. There is actually a little pitfall uh, related to the A plus B buttons. If you press them and hold them too long, nothing is going to happen. So you actually have to press them and release them quickly for this to work. Now there are two things you want to do before uh, adding the last stage, which is the radio part. And that is to reset the throttle every time we start our vehicle. Let's say we have been driving some vehicle and then um, we have armed it. So it's the motor started to spin and then we have increased the throttle and then we have stopped it by disarming which is switching the arm off okay so now the the light is off so the vehicle has stopped now the throttle is still high if we start it again now the motors are going to spin very fast and we might be surprised uh, we didn't know that it will go this quickly and something unexpected can happen so we want to always start with a throttle that is low so we can build up slowly so we don't have like accidental starts. So let's make sure that every time we start or stop the vehicle we will set the throttle to zero. And when do we start and stop the vehicle? That's here on the A plus B button when we change the arm because the arm is the start and the stop. So what we want to do, we want to set the throttle to zero. So we go to variables, set, and then down here 
we will set the throttle to zero. So every time we press A and B, if it's starting or stopping, we will always set the throttle to zero. And there's another uh, handy feature that we can use. Sometimes if we lose control of things, we need a quick way to stop. But if we want to stop it quickly, A plus B can be a little fiddly. If you're stressed, uh, there's a part of our brain called the reptile brain, which is the oldest part of our brain, which might take over. And this brain is very primitive. It can only do like very basic stuff. So if we become stressed, the only thing we can do is start to shake our hands. And that will actually make the vehicle stop. So we can use this shake feature. So if we go to input and on shake, we can now make the vehicle stop. And how do we do that? Well, we go to variables to set the arm to zero because that's going to stop the vehicle. And we can also set the throttle to zero just to be sure. So now we can download the code and see if it works. So now I will increase the throttle and uh, this uh, pixel is moving upwards. Now I can arm it by pressing A plus B. Now we have the arm light and I increase the throttle. And now let's see if the shake function is working. So I shake and now we see the arm light is off and the throttle is back to zero. You can try it again. And shake. And it's down to zero. Okay, so the last thing we need is to send these values over the radio. Now we have uh, collected the, the values with the buttons, with the accelerometer. We have even showed it on the screen. But the last thing we need is to send those values over to the receiver with the radio because the values are still just inside our microbit. Uh, so now let's find the forever loop. And in the bottom of the forever loop, that's where we want to use the radio. So we go to radio and we want to use the one that is called send value name equals zero. And the reason for that is that we don't just want to send a bunch of numbers. Because if we do that, uh, the receiver part will have a hard time telling the difference between each of the values. The receiver cannot not know if this is an arm or roll or throttle or whatever. So we can give a name to the value. So let's go back to the rule that we learned, the art rule. Arm, roll and throttle. So to make things simple, we can just use a big letter. The first letter that symbolizes the value. So the arm value, you can just use the big number A. This is case sensitive, so you have to use a big number A. It will not work with uh, anything else. And what is the A value? Well, it's the arm value. So we go to variables, arm. Now it will send whatever is the arm value. So if it's zero or is it one? send it together with the number A and the receiver will know that this is the arm value. Now we need to do this for the other ones. And you might now understand how this works. So we can duplicate it. And uh, what is the next letter in the rule? Well, that's the R. And what is the R? It's the roll. And the last one, that was the speed. And what's the speed called? It's the throttle. 
So now we are sending arm, roll and throttle. So let's transfer the code and see if we can test it. To test this we actually would need another micro bit that has the proper receiving code. I can now test the code on uh, another micro bit or another product like the hover bit. So now I have downloaded the default code for the green card hover bit and I have also set the channel to the same channel as I had on my transmitter. So now when I connect the battery, watch the number on the screen here. Now we see that it has the number 7 and it means that now it should be uh, communicating with my transmitter. So now let's see if this is working. So now I roll it to the side like a key and the tail fin is moving same way as I roll it. Then we can try the arm. So I arm it and I disarm it. I start and I stop. And lastly I can try the throttle. And the shake. And also notice on the screen here the throttle number is being shown. To make the remote control work for the Airbit drone, uh, there is a few things we need to do. Uh, because the drone moves in three dimensions, uh, we need to add uh, one uh, direction of movement and that is called pitch. Uh, so uh, we can simply start by duplicating the roll. Then uh, we change it to pitch. If you don't have the pitch variable, you can create it by go to variables and make a variable. And then we have to make sure it's also pitch here. So we set the pitch to the rotation pitch. Um, we also want to see uh, on the screen uh, the pitch movement. Uh, the pitch movement is like the forward and backwards movement of the drone. Uh, we go to um, this map section, duplicate that, and we insert it into the Y section and change it to pitch. And now we go to the simulator. You can see that the dot is moving in two directions. So we have the roll and the pitch and the pitch makes the drone go forward and backwards. Uh, the roll makes the uh, drone go sideways. Then we need to do one thing with the throttle. Um, because on the drone we want to have a more precise uh, throttle control. Um, so uh, we use the logic. If and then a comparison if uh, throttle is uh, less than 60 change throttle by minus 5 and then else Change throttle by minus one. And this is because when the drone is flying, uh, when, when the throttle is above 60, it means the drone is probably flying. And now you want to have a very precise control of, of the height of the drone. 
you want to be able to change it with only one step instead of five steps. So you want to change it with only one. But you don't want that for a beginning because in the beginning you want it to race quickly. You don't want to press 60 times. That's why we start with the large change and then switch to a small change. And we need to do exactly the same on the button B. We can uh, duplicate this. And now it's the same except it's positive. So 5 and 1. If it's less than 60, we change it by 5. If it's more than 60, we change it only 1. So now it's going to raise quickly up and then now it's going slower and slower. Um, one more thing, we have to send the values over the radio. We are sending the arm, we are sending the roll, we are sending the trowel. We need to send the pitch as well. You can duplicate one of them. And big letter P for pitch. Like that. This is what you need to control the Airbit drone. 